Welcome to Coding with Danny. Today we have an exciting topic to explore. Our presentation is all about exploring Spring Cloud Gateway, transforming microservices communication. Let's dive in. In this video, I'll show you how to configure an API gateway to route traffic to your microservices architecture. We'll use plain scenario to understand and avoid all the technical jargons. We'll break it down into bite-sized concept to understand this complex topic and implement Spring Gateway from scratch using Spring Boot 6 and HashiCorp Council. Let's understand this with a simple scenario. Imagine there is a post office with a magical wizard who sorts and sends letter to the right houses. Okay, This wizard is called Spring Cloud Gateway. It makes sure that every letter ends up at the correct house just like how your mom or dad would make sure that your friend's birthday invitation reaches your friend's house. But how does this magic works? So people drop off letter at the post office. These letters have to be sent to different houses in your town. In the computer world, these letters are like messages or requests sent to different parts of a computer system. Spring Cloud Gateway is like a super fast sorting machine. It looks at each letter, reads the address on it, which is like the digital address of a computer service and then magically sends it to the right houses. Spring Cloud Gateway also checks the letters to make sure they are not from naughty or unwanted people. It's like your parents making sure that you don't invite a troublemaker to your birthday party. Just like how the magical machine helps sort letter for many people, Spring Cloud Gateway helps lot of computer programs talk to each other without getting confused. And not only this, imagine that your house can host a party for only 30 guests. Spring Cloud Gateway also controls this traffic and direct additional guests to garage for the party to continue. Think of rate limiter and load balancer in microservices world. Let's take a look at some of the use cases and why we need gateway in the first place. This scenario is when you have the multiple clients and they each want different data with different format or sizes. This means that every service needs to have a flavor for different client, which also means that you need to have different rate limits, different client, different security, authorization for each client and separate logging and so on and so on. As you can see, this quickly becomes a hot mess versus hiding this services behind a gateway, which takes care of all those cutting concerns. Second use case is when you have begin to break your monolith to a set of microservices. You don't need to keep adding new URIs. Okay. Gateway allows you to do that dynamic routing which makes breaking a monolith to service a breeze. And the third and the most important use case is that it helps you create a single interface for all your different services and makes your customer life easier. They don't have to subscribe to multiple authorization, use different certs and format for header and handle different response header for every service. Now a typical gateway flow looks something like this. Here is a client that sends a request to gateway URL to access a service functionality. The, the call is matched against a mapping. Let's say the mapping is just a plain URI. We're not talking about headers or cookies matching, just plain header or plain URI. And if the map mapping is matched, the call is passed reset. A typical gateway flow looks like this. Here a client sends a request to gateway to access a service functionality. The call is matched against a mapping. Let's say the mapping is just a plain URI. We're not talking about mapping of headers or cookies or anything else. Just plain URI. If the mapping is matched, the call is passed on to the pre-request filter, which may do some processing before the request is passed on to the downstream services. There are also global filter that takes common authorization, other cross-cutting concern and post filter that can do some processing before sending the response to the client. Remember, the call has went to the downstream service and the downstream services send the response back and now you want to add some form of common headers, maybe for tracking and tracking and tracing ID. You want to add something in the response header when you're sending back to the clients. That is where your after a post filter comes into picture. So as you can see here in detail, all the different functions that each blocks place. Now for the purpose of this demo, I cannot cover every functionality. So we'll first learn the basic and I'll go over the most common mapping and filters. Okay. So we'll go over service discovery, load balancing scenario in this demo. And right now 
let's go ahead and dive into the demo now we'll build three microservices user service department service and organization service for adding a little flavor i'm using open fane to make one call from department service to user service user service runs on port 3000 department service on 4000 organization service runs on port 6000 then we add service discovery using council council is a service identity and networking solution which we'll use for discovery and orchestration okay another service discovery solution that you may have often used or heard in the past i think it's there for a very long time now netflix eureka but unlike netflix eureka council is non-blocking newer and more efficient way to do service orchestration and service discovery and also spring has a council integration called spring cloud console which we will use in microservices to allow console to discover these services and a spoiler alert when i did this uh, de uh working demo or code in my macbook m1 i have a macbook m1 silicon you might run into an issue where the aux service shows a dns resolver error when it is behind a gateway you will be able to call it from the console url but not from the gateway due to some architecture in incompatibility this works fine on window i already tested it and also works on linux the solution which is provided in their uh, github issue list or on stack Overflow didn't work for me all i could do was just hide the error but it i was still uh, not getting a response i was getting 404 okay so don't don't freak out if if you see this it's a issue specific to m1 silicon architecture let's go ahead and create a brand new project we're going to call this project as gateway demo we're going to fill in all the properties that are needed. Uh, the group name will be com.java habit. We're going to leave every other value as is and go ahead and click on next. We will choose a very basic dependency called Spring Web. Add that in, create the project and let the project start up. That a project is created, we'll create three more modules called user service, organization service and department service. Let's go ahead and create those. At this point, we don't need the SRC main Java folder over here. So we'll just go ahead and delete this folder. Next, we'll go ahead and create the module called user service. We are going to provide org as Java habit. Next, we're going to pick the module Spring Web and click create. We're going to do the same for the next two service that is department and auction service. We'll pick the same module Spring Web and go ahead and continue. I will fast forward through this section now. Let's go ahead and create the required package. We are going to create few packages, controller, service, domain, and value objects. So let's go ahead and start the creation of those project before we start writing any of the classes. Let's go ahead and create a view object called user, which will be of type record. And in the user, we're going to provide the ID of the user. We're going to write the first name and the last name of the user. We're going to provide date of birth and it's a Java util class. Next, we're going to create the error class, which will have description and capture all our error scenarios. So that's created. Let's go ahead and create our user response view class which will be of type record. And this will take in user object and the error object for any error descriptions. Next, we are going to go ahead and create the, our controller class and we're going to call it as user service controller. We'll add the required annotation and create the request mapping as user. We're going to define the interface service, which we haven't created, but we're going to do that. And we'll inject this via constructor injection. Let's go ahead and create our get mapping. This is a simple get user details by ID. And it'll return application JSON. This will return user response VO. And we'll take in an ID as a request parameter which will be of type string. We're going to create one more method. This one, we're going to get the user details by department ID. We'll just go ahead and change the resource URIs and the method names. 
let's go ahead and introduce our interface class called i service next we're going to introduce a couple of methods here which is going to return type user and that will be fetch user by department id and fetch user by user id this will take an integer so we will be parsing our department id that we capture as a string we're going to parse it as an integer and pass it to this method similarly we are going to create another one called fetch user by id which is again an integer and both of these are going to throw an error for data not found exception so let's go ahead and create our data not found exception class which is going to extend the exception class and simply going to return back the message that we pass back from the method if user is not found either by id or by department id we're going to create an implementation class called user service impl which will implement the interface i service and it's going to implement both the method that are provided by service So we added the dummy methods and now we are just making sure that we don't have any errors showing up. We will now go ahead and create our user response view and get all the user object by calling the service. So let's start with get user detail by ID. We'll introduce the user response view and we're going to add a try catch block because it's going to throw a data not found exception. Our user object is going to call the user service and it's going to get user fetch user detail by id and i don't see that method maybe i made a mistake so let's go and check okay there's still an issue so let's go back and check our service class maybe i misspelled something uh, oh that's the issue so let me go back to the service class and fix the spelling to fetch user by id we're going to fix in the implementation class as well and now i should be able to call that method using the user service object so fetch user by id and it needs a type integer but i have it as string so we will go ahead and fix this by parsing it using integer.parseInt so it returns a string type integer type so that gives the value and it requires a exception to be caught that's data not found exception so whenever a value uh, user is not found we are going to throw this error and we are going to capture this information in our error object that we created earlier which is going to capture and just return the message and in our user response view we are going to create a user response view where the value of user will be null but error object will be populated because the user has not been found but in the try block we are going to provide user as a value but the error object will be null because user has been found so you won't find any error so this looks good we're going to return the user response view in the response entity objects we are going to create the user response view and return http status as 200 or okay this looks good at this point now we're going to copy the same thing and repeat this whole code in our get user by department id We'll just go ahead and replace every value that is required and replace it with the fetch user by department information. Everything else looks same. We'll go ahead and update our application YAML file. I'm going to rename this to YAML because that's what I prefer. Application.yaml. Next, in this file, we will go ahead and add the port number, the context name and the application name so let's define the port number first so port number is server dot port we are going to define port as 3000 then we are going to define the application context path as forward slash and we'll define the application name and a jackson default property inclusion non null so this will make sure that an object in the response if it is null it's not going to show over there so if, we, if you're just passing user and the object uh, object of error is null, you won't see that value in the response JSON. Let's go ahead and update our implementation class. So in the implementation class, we're going to introduce a list of user, which we're going to create now. And we're going to do this by calling our constructor, which will call a add user method. And in that, we are going to introduce four or five dummy values 
So I'm just going to create one add user and user list equal to new array list. And inside this, I'm just going to provide some dummy values. Okay. So first one, I'm going to provide ID, new user ID equal to one. And I'm going to just provide a random name at this point. And I'll add the date of birth. Make sure you're using the Java util properly. So instead of month as a number, make sure you're providing calendar.december because that's the right way to do it. It's a de deprecated way if you put uh, the number 12 over there. It'll still work, but make sure you are avoiding all the deprecate method. So at this point, I have put all of the values except the department number. So I'm going to add the department number right here as 101. And now I'm going to make a copy of this line and create three to four extra users and just go ahead and replace the value for all of them. So I'm going to move this to two, three and four. And I just, I'm just going to put some more values for departments, 102, 103, 104. And I'm going to put some random dates over there. These are all fake dates. So don't use this for SSN or anything, okay? So let's replace this with March and this one with June. And let's change the last name to Jones. Let's fix the spelling over here. This one with Williams and the last name for the last one is Malik and the first name David, Keith and James Malik. All right, this looks good. So now we will go ahead and make sure that a user is found in the particular department. So for that, we're going to use user stream and we'll use the filter to filter the department ID and are going to use the find first method and return if the user has been found. Otherwise it's going to throw an error. So we're going to use or else method and in or else method, we're going to show that it's going to throw the data not found exception and we'll define our own error message as user not found in this department. Let's add that exception message now, user not found in this department. And now we are going to use the same code for our next criteria. Let me fix the spelling here for our next method over here, fetch user by ID, because that's exactly the same. Just the u.id and the user ID will replace the department ID and we're going to fix the error message that user is not found. So at this point, this looks good. We'll go back to our service application and we'll try and run and make sure that everything looks good. Let's go ahead and start the application now. The application looks to be started on port 3000. Let's check it out on Postman where we're going to check the department ID first. If I pass the value 104, I get the value. I'm going to pass 102 two that gets the value and invalid value should give me an error user not found in this department now let's go ahead and check for get user by details so i'm going to update the value let's fix the resource name first get user by department id so i'm going to update the value over here by the correct method name and port number is 3000 so i'm getting the value for one i'm getting value for two and for six i'm getting user not found Let's go ahead and create the other service now. Let's start working on our organization service. We're going to create the same packages as we did earlier. We're going to create a package called controller. Except the error package, we're going to create every other package because this is going to be a straight get call without any uh, error being found. So there won't be any parameters being passed. It will be just uh, get organization detail. So we have created all the packages. Next, we are going to create a domain object, which will be of type record. And uh, in that, we're just going to have an uh, organization ID and an organization name that we're going to define now. So we have created the organization ID and the organization name that will go in this record class. This looks good. Let's, oh, that's a spelling mistake. Let me fix that. Now let's go ahead and create our view object. 
which will again be a record class for org response view. That's where we're going to return back to the user. And org response view will just have an organization object that we're going to return back. Next, we are going to go ahead and create our controller class. This class will be called organization controller. We'll have our usual annotation for REST controller and request mapping. We're going to call this as org service. So let's write that down over here, org service. I need to put it in the double quotes. So let's put that. Again, this thing is going to have an get mapping and we're going to define the value as get org details, which is going to be producing application JSON. Let's all right. So let's go ahead and create our response entity return type with a message called get organization detail. And this will not have any incoming parameters. So it's just a simple plain get call without any request param or query params. And we are going to return a response entity of org response view and going to give the HTTP status equal to okay. So it's a very simple class. We're going to fix this and put the org response out so that we can call it from the our service interface and we're going to create the org response view. This will not have any exceptions as well. So keep that in mind because it's a simple class. So get org response view and let's go ahead and fix this first. And we are going to replace this with application JSON actually. Let's not keep this. I don't know why it's showing up, but I'm not going to spend time on that. You can figure it out on your own. So I'm going to put application JSON. And at this point, I need a service class. So I'm going to go and define a organization controller in which I'm going to create a service interface, which we haven't created. We're going to do that shortly. We're going to call this as org service and we're going to inject into our controller. Always prefer construction injection over auto wiring. So this dot org service is equal to org service. And let's go ahead and define our interface class, which will be a very simple interface with just one method where it is going to return the organization detail. We'll have only one organization in there. So let's create the method called get org detail, which will return the organization type. And now we're going to create an implementation class for this service. So that's organization service and we'll have it as service annotation, which will return the implemented method from the interface service class. So all the errors are now gone. And now I can just go ahead and replace org service with get org detail. And let's go ahead and check what is the issue. Um, I don't see an issue. So let's go back and check the service class if I made a mistake uh change variable type to oh okay so this is supposed to return an organization object actually so i need to fix that first so let's go ahead and provide that fix so this is going to be a new org response view which is going to have org service that get org detail so now this looks good and now let's go back in our implementation class and in the implementation class we are going to return a very simple organization id equal to one and organization name as xyz inc so this completes our service class we'll just go ahead and update everything in our application yaml i missed a forward slash so let me add that and now let's go and fix the values in the application properties again i'm going to rename this to yaml file it's your choice. You can go ahead with the properties and we'll have the usual suspects are server port, context path, and a name of the service, the application name. We're going to define it as org service. So this looks good and we can go ahead and start our application now. Let's start this service now. We're going to click on start, right click, run. And this is running on port 6000. Let's check on Postman. Everything looks good. I'm going to send it and I should be able to see get XYZ Inc. Now let's go back and start working on next service. 
let's go and start working on our department service we are going to create all the six packages that we created earlier for our user service which means this will have the error package as well so let's go and create controller domain error package as i mentioned earlier the next one is going to be service package and lastly we'll create a vo package for our response vos Let's go ahead and change our application.properties to application.yaml file. Application.yaml, that's what I prefer as I mentioned earlier. And in our build.gradle, we are going to need some more dependencies because department service is going to be using OpenFane call to call the user service. So over here, I'm going to define the OpenFane service spring boot and will be spring cloud starter open fan we're going to import this there are a few more dependencies that we need we're going to add those the next one is going to be a pom for our spring spring cloud starter so let's go ahead and add that uh, so this one is going to be a compile because we are going to bring in a pom xml a pom dependency so we are going to add the group for a uh, spring org framework boot and rename it to cloud and the name that we need is spring cloud dependencies and we are going to provide a version number pick up the version number that is available when you start looking at this code because for me right now it's 22.04 and if you're watching sometime in future this might be slightly a higher version so this is an extension pom the next we are going to add another implementation for our spring spring cloud bootstrap starter project so let's go and add the bootstrap spring cloud starter bootstrap and again, as I mentioned, look at the latest version number. Another thing which we need to add is the properties for the Spring Cloud version. This is a property which we want to use in our dependency management. So I'm just going to define a Spring Cloud version with whatever the latest version that is available over there. You may or may not define it. I'm just showing you. Uh, another way of adding it if you have to change some anytime in future you can go ahead and introduce that otherwise even if you don't define that you should still be okay and you can define it directly so i've defined a dependency maven project and in the maven bomb i am going to define or dot spring framework and here i'm going to define the cloud group and adding the spring cloud dependencies and with the property that I've defined earlier as I mentioned you can directly define the version number as 22.0.4 this is the version that was available when I was building it and with that we have added all the all of the dependencies now we need to go and create a in the domain object we are going to go ahead and create the department dom object first which is going to be a record and it is going to be a department ID followed by the department name you can pick whatever name you name you want i'm just creating descriptive names so next go ahead and create the your value object so this is going to be my department response view which is again of type record and this will have a department object and the error so if the department is not found it is going to throw an error and we're going to capture in the error object and in the View class we are again going to go ahead and define our error object if you don't want to type it out you can copy the error and the data not found exception classes from our user service so that's what i'm going to do for the error package i'm going to copy it the data not found exception from my user service and just copy paste so that i can save some time creating the service now i'm going to replace this error over here because it was pointing to the wrong package now that i've fixed it let's go and see what else we need so at this time we have the service 
we are going to define our service interface again same it is going to have an interface service we are going to add that and in the interface here we are going to define the method called get department details by id which is going to return the department object and it's going to take a department id which will throw a data not found exception if the department is not found okay and now we'll go ahead and create an implementation class for department service remember we haven't started writing the open fane for user service we are going to do that shortly so right now just go ahead and create for department service it implements we have added it and right now it's just returning null we're going to fill in the detail later let's go ahead and start our controller classes so created the controller called department controller and we'll add our usual annotation for rest controller and define our request mapping we are going to call this as department slash department uh, that should be okay and now we'll define our service interface service as department service and we're going to inject this in our department controller class so let's go ahead and create the constructor for department controller again always prefer constructor injection over auto wire so you have defined the interface service and now we're going to set the values this dot department service is equal to department service so once this is set we are good to go we can go ahead and define our get mapping and get mapping we are going to define get uh, the value of the uh, resource is going to be get department details by id and again it's going to be producing application json so we're going to type it out application json application slash json and now we can define our response class that is going to be response entity and which will be returned by a method called get department details by id this will again accept a request parameter of string department id let's fix this so string id and now i'm going to define a department response view this is a response which is going to come back from our service class so i've created that and it's going to throw a data not found exception so let's go and define the exception scenario first so i've created the department response view and this response view is going to take null as a parameter because department has not been found and we're going to create a new error object called dne.get message now this is set up while in our try block we are going to get back department so in that case any error value if you're going to set that is going to be null so this method takes an integer dot parse id so we've defined that and in our department response view we are going to call our department and null the values are set so now we have everything set up and we should be okay to return the return the value of department response view so let me return that particular value add return statement and we're going to return the department response view so we're going to pass that in the response entity which is going to take the object department response view and return status equal to okay we're going to copy paste this whole thing and we are now going to change the return type to string because that we are already getting a json string right so i'm just going to update the get mapping values and over here i'm going to replace this value with string we're going to update the method name to get details by id with get users by department id and request param will remain same we are just going to change the variable name to department id uh everything else we're going to right now delete and because we first need to start working on our service class so over here we're going to just put it as null for now and now we're going to create a service so this is going to be interface because we are creating open fan so you just need to provide the direction on what is needed so we are we have defined a user client service and we're going to introduce at fan client 
So we defined our at fin client at this point. Now we need to provide what is the resource that we're going to call. So in our case, it's called user service. And the we have to now provide the get mapping and here we're going to define what is the uh, resource name that we're going to call in the user service, which is defined like this. And we're going to add that exact same resource name that is uh, user slash get user by department ID parameter as department ID. That's all we need to do. It will figure out how to do that. Uh, this will not work out of the box and you'll see why. So let's go ahead and first add our application YAML. So we are going to be defining context path and this will run on port 4000. Now we're going to provide the application name and we're going to call this as department service. Let's go ahead and work on our department service implementation class first. So here we're going to follow the same method as we did in the user class, user service class. We are going to define the list of departments and here we're going to create a constructor and inside that constructor we're going to add the add department. So whenever the department service is instantiated, this method is going to get called and inside this method, we are going to define couple of dummy departments. There'll be four of them in our case. So we have created the array list and the first one we're going to add is the department. We're going to define the department ID as 101 and type as accounts. We are then going to copy four instances of these and for each of these we are going to define different departments. So the second one is called marketing. The third one we're going to define as sales and last one as IT department. So we have all of these department defined and we're going to update the IDs and now we're going to return the department but we cannot just return as is because we have to return it by ID. So here we're going to use the department list as stream and we are going to filter on the department ID. So we're going to add the filter. Then we're going to say find first and if the value is fine, it will be returned. Otherwise, we want to throw back an data not found exception. So we're going to define or else throw and here we're going to define a data not found exception and we're going to create our message which will say that the department ID is not found. So we have created the message here, department not found. And now we need to go back in here and we're going to start the class. And let's test out the first value in here. This is get department ID, but I see that error is being written as null. We're going to fix that shortly. So at 108, I get department not found. And again, I see a null object. So we have to go back to our application YAML and introduce the Jackson inclusion, property inclusion and define as non-null. And what that is going to do is it is going to fix our problem where in the JSON response, if the value of an object is null, it is going to be excluded from the response. So once I've defined that, we'll restart this. And now if I go back and check, you'll see that only error is being returned. And if I pass a valid department ID, I will get the accounts information. So this looks good. We'll now go ahead and work on our open fan user get user by department id and for that if you see here what it is supposed to do is when i make a call to this it should call the user service and get the values so if i pass the same values which i was passing to user id i should be getting a valid response back so this takes in department id and for this to work i need to define the interface for the user client survey that we created earlier so I've defined the user client service and the with the same name and I'm going to in, inject the same thing in our constructor where we already have the department service. So we are going to define this and we have set the values now. Now we're going to go back in here and in the user client service, we already defined the same URI that we are using for calling the user service. Next we go to the application class. And the application class, we are going to introduce the annotation for enabling open fan client. So we're going to add that enable fan clients. 
and we go back to our controller class make sure that in the implementation method we are now calling the user client service which is supposed to return the value so right now it was null we are going to update by get user by department id and we pass the value so we are going to start this but you will see that there is an error there is still an error right and the application didn't even start up so one of the reason if you are thinking that it could be because our user application may be down so we have started that if you see our user service is up now on port 3000 and even then I am not getting back any values so that doesn't mean that user service was the issue there is some other issue that I am going to explain now so if I am going to start again if you see that user service started but it is still erroring out if you see the error you will see that load balancing issue error creating bean and application run fail so why is that that's because in our department service we need to add one more annotation for discovery client because it says load balancer so let's add that but you're going to still see the error because we are still it is still not able to locate the client user service now where is that going to come from so if you go back to our docker as I explained in the beginning that you need to introduce council for discovery client Disco discovering a service many times people use Eureka but in our case we are going to use HashiCorp council so the first thing we need to do is we need to now add the image HashiCorp council let's go ahead and download the docker image for HashiCorp console call it council console whatever you want uh, for me it's very convenient to call it council so i just call council so i already have that image let's go and check if the image has been downloaded correctly so i'm going to call the reference command over here doctor docker images and reference equal to hashic or console so let's see if i get the value uh, looks like i made a spelling mistake here so let me fix that so this shows that it has been done i downloaded it like 35 hours ago so that's why you'll see that it say that it was downloaded 35 hours ago now we need to go ahead and run this so we are going to execute the command docker run hyphen d name console server you can find this information on the hashicorp console page as well you can just copy paste i'm just typing out slowly so that if you're following the tutorial you should be able to uh, follow along so in our case i provided the port number as 8500 for image hashicorp console and it is a server agent boot ex expect equal to one and i'm going to simply provide binding id equal to 000 so that the port number can be the ip address is uh, exposed uh, this is failing because there is already a container so i think i need to just go and fix that value um, because the command looks correct i may be missing another value but we'll figure it out for now let me just go and delete the container over here and now if i do it shows that the container is running and let's open the ui 8500 on port 8500 localhost i should be able to see that the service is up and i should be able to get the ui which says council service is up i see that this page is not loading up which means i made a mistake with the command line so let me go back and check the information on the website and if i map everything correctly looks like i might be missing one value in there so let me just delete this container and there's a setting that i missed that is a ui so i just copy pasted from the website so i was missing that dash hyphen ui and now i should be able to see that the console server is up and i'm able to get the first one out now we need to go back and enable the discovery for user service department service and organization service so that my department service can start up basically so for doing that i first need to go ahead and add the dependencies that are needed in build.gradle file so i'm going to go back here and here i am going to copy paste the dependency which i already have because there's just too much typing and there was a reason i didn't add it in the beginning because there are some 
values which gets added and it gets very difficult for people why they were added i wanted to break it up into steps so which is why i said i'll add it one by one as and when they are needed so the first one is that we are going to add the spring cloud dependencies which is of type pom the next one we're going to add is the console all so you can use eureka client if you want but uh eureka client is now outdated console is much better at performance so i'm using that so i've added a uh, starter console all and the import now i'm going to basically copy paste the whole dependency into my other services so in my department service i'm going to go in department service and add basically all the same values that i added earlier so some of these are already present so i need to be mindful that i'm not overriding it or i may not be deleting them so let me fix those so i added that this looks good and now i need to go in the organization service and i'm going to copy the same dependency now organization service does not need to be on the uh, discovery client but i'm going to add that because when i create the gateway application which we haven't started yet it's it would need a load balancer discovery client there as well so which is why i'm putting organization service as well on console so i've added all the dependencies and everything should be starting up fine but there is an issue that we haven't provided the configuration in the application yaml so we need to add information in application yaml as well because when the application starts up and it looks at the enabled discovery client it needs to know that on what port i would be expecting a discovery server to be running so which is why you would see this error if you've just added dependency and not added in your configuration in your application yaml so let's go ahead and add that in information and again like i said we are going to copy paste everything into application yaml of other other services as well so first thing you need to define is cloud console is running on port 8500 like we had defined when we're starting up our container and it's running on host equal to localhost and we're going to put prefer ip address equal to true you can keep it false if you want it's up to you however you want to do it and the instance id we are going to provide the name of the uh, application name that is running so in our case it is user service and over here hyphen you can provide whatever value you, you want to put in i want to provide that this is running on some port so in our case the port is 3000 so as instance id will look like user service hyphen 3000 and a random value so we are the last part which we are putting is random integer 1 through 99 so that will be our instance id that will show up when the service is discovered on the console okay and we are going to provide that the service name is spring application name user service this is a service which we have defined in our department user clients class if you remember we created that user hyphen service right when we said at enable faint client so we are going to do that in the department service as well we're going to copy over here as well everything will remain the same and now if you start up the application you would see that there is a another error which is showing up that's probably because we have not defined discovery client in one of our services so let's check that out uh, in the user service we need to go back to our user service controller everything looks good here in the yeah over here we need to add enable discovery client so this this looks good we need to make sure that this is also present in our let's start this one first i don't think i've added an organization service so let's see yep this was missing here let's start the application now so service is up user application is up uh looks like i might have put in a wrong dependency in there but we'll see uh let's start the organization service this starts up well and time to test our department service which came up correctly let's check the console so console says everything came up except the department service this is not getting registered so let's take a look at department service the issue might be with one of the dependencies so we have all the annotation let's look at build.gradle 
uh i see there is a value missing oh there we let's go ahead and fix the dependency and everything looks good now and we should not have any issues so let's rebuild and let's restart department service at this time okay this came up well let's check all right so it does show up in console service which means that everything is working fine and now i'm able to get the value of, so there i am able to get the values now let's come to the most important part now the gateway service so we're going to create a brand new module called gateway and inside that we are going to define a group and we are just going to import spring web application although you can import all the dependency you need but i want to show you every single dependency that is required so that it makes sense when you are trying to create the tutorial at your own end so everything remains the same i'll remove the test class because i don't need that and everything else is good here we're going to rename the application properties to yaml file and let's go ahead and add the build.gradle and in our build.gradle we'll need few dependencies but remember as i mentioned earlier if you're on mac m1 uh, your service may not work that is if you're using the netty client along with the open fan uh, it might not work so if you're on windows do that the solution provided on the github issues for the same did not work for me it basically says that change the arm architecture to uh, apple m1 silicon that didn't work for me so if you know a workaround do let me know but if you're in windows you should be good so as you can see i've added the netty i've added the pom for the cloud dependency you need to add the actuator if you want or you can ignore that then you need to put in this cloud starter gateway. This is an important one. And again, the console, because we also want our gateway service to be published on the console server. So we're going to add that. And this uh, spring starter web is not required. So make sure you delete that. If you leave it in there, your application is not going to start up. So just remove that. And at this point, everything looks good. I'm just going to leave the spring boot starter test as is and now we need to just add the properties file for spring cloud version and we'll add the dependency management so let's go ahead and add the dependency management i'm going to copy paste as is from my previous projects and everything builds up all right no issues at this point so now let's go to our application yaml so we are going to add all the basic things that we have been adding for simple services we will add the port number 80 so this gateway application is running on port 8080 so all our services will go through a single entry point via port 8080 for the gateway service so we have defined our gateway service and we are going to define the console which is on port 8500 80, we're going to set the config enabled equal to false in this case and the host is localhost all this all the properties for console are exactly same except the cloud console config enabled we had i think we had set it to true if i remember over here we have set it to false and discover prefer ip address was also true for all the other here we have just Put it as false so it's up to you how you want to define you can read details on what these different values mean i'm not going into detail on this because the primary focus is on the gateway services so we're going to put in the our first configuration for gateway that uh, discovery locator enabled equal to 2 this will actually help you if you are using actuator to track down that when i call my service on port 8080 where is it exactly going is it going to port 4000 6000 okay so now we define our routes so in our route we are first going to define user service you can give it any name you want but in uri uh, provide a load balancer url and this load balancer url is exactly equal to what you've defined on the console so for user service if i remember correctly i think it is uh, user hyphen service let me start all the services up so i can see the names correctly so i've started the organization user service 
and all the services are up at this point so my service name is user hyphen service so that's the name that is going to come from the load balancer so i'm going to put this same name over here user hyphen service and now i need to define a predicate predicate is a value which tells you that if your user service has the path which start with user and can be any other value after that then allow that otherwise it is going to throw 404 error that it is not able to find that so we, we are going to create basic ones and for that i am now going to copy the same for our organization and our department service we'll just change the name of the load balancer so i'm going to copy it from here it's called org service and the path predicate i'm going to change that so this is only for the entry and we'll we'll see what what that means okay so we are going to call this as org service and the path i believe start with organization or org service so yeah we do have defined at org service so let's go back and make sure that's the value yep that's the org service so anything after org service if i'm going to call localhost 8080 hyphen org service then i should be able to reach to the organization service so same way for the department service we're going to change the values you can name ids anything like i mentioned earlier i can call it d service a service b service it'll work exactly those are just ids so i'm just going to copy the same value that my resource is called department now my basic gateway setup is done okay so i'm going to start my gateway application and now when i access all my services on port 8080 with the same path resource path i had defined earlier i should be able to get the values if you see i'm able to get the values back so if i pass a valid id i get a response back everything will work exactly as it was working from the load balancer url on the discovery client which is console so i'm changing 8080 it hits the discovery client discovery client discovery server sorry discovery server passes on to the backend services so everything so we have set up a basic gateway service let's see what other things that you can do with the service uh, spring cloud gateway so let's open the documentation so this is the main documentation page and you can scroll down to the uh, predicate and over here you can see how you can pass cookies you can pass host names so what basically predicate does is any incoming call it is going to match either on uri cookie header name certificate and so on and so forth so over here if you look at the predicate factory over uh, here we are looking at the after out that any request that comes after this particular time will only be allowed otherwise it's not going to get allowed similarly you have before predicate you have a header router here which we're going to see a lot in this example we're going to play around with that you also have cookies host route method route path route. we're going to take a look at all of these so let's go ahead and play around with some header so what we're going to do is we're going to pass some header value as username and what it'll do is when the request comes in it is going to match that if the path matches with user and a header has a value coding with Danny and that header name we will define as user hyphen name. So if this header is passed only then you're going to, the request is going to get passed on to the console server otherwise you're going to get 404. So we have provided that and if I restart my application now I've already added this in my postman so if i go in my get user detail if you see i already have this file if i remove this it is going to give me 404 error because the income request didn't match as soon as i add that value it is going to add this so let's play around with another configuration for predicate called path sorry method where we are going to define that the incoming call incoming request has to be either a post or a get or maybe a combination of get and post so in our case we're going to do that but make sure you're not providing spaces between equal signs so if you see here if you pass it like this it is going to fail the application startup so make sure there are no spaces over here so i'm going to 
put method equal to post and you'll see that the request will throw 404 error because our, all our requests are type get so it says 404 and if I go back and say that my method allowed is post and get it will allow me to send the request all the way to the backend if you see here I'm able to send the request I'm getting a response back again okay let's play some more let's see what else we can do so at this point if I if I provide a query param and define that my query param is id and takes only digits so before I see how this work let's let's look at how the application work before I restart with the new changes if I pass one it will give me a value back if I pass one two two everything is digit I'm still getting value back if I pass an alphanumeric without the predicate value right now it will give me 500 but as soon as I restart my application with the new query configuration it will say that if the id is equal to an alphanumeric or anything other than digit it will give me 404 error so you will not see 500 error anymore so I am still going to pass this and now you see the error changes to 404 okay so this is how another configuration works so if I pass 3 it is still working so everything works well now there is an issue okay so if I go and hit the other one over here the value is department id so if I pass this it will still give me 404 that's because over here I have defined that the query name is equal to id so to solve that problem one of the ways is that you can create two different route for the same service so I'm going to copy paste this information and create one more route for the same user service but this time I am going to let's rename this first to user service user department I need to change this value to department ID one other way is I could have defined multiple query as a comma separate value as in type array and that would have worked but I want to show you another way of doing that so now if I go back and do department ID I'll still get the value back and it'll still give me 404 error if I pass an alphanumeric variable in there okay so this works fine now let's look at what other configurations are available so now the other one we're going to look at filters shortly so let's go ahead and define filters now filters are request that is it can either transform the incoming request before it passes on to the downstream services or it can transform the request and response when the request is going back to the user so over here I am providing add user header calling from postman so basically it will add a new header so let's go ahead and test it out um, I am going to restart this and I should be able to see this in the request that goes to the backend that is my backend service so I will not be able to see it over here I will have to go ahead and log all of the information that is going back so for that we need to make a code change so in my user service when the call comes in we need to capture the header and for that we'll have to go and add the information for headers so we'll define the annotation at request header and define a variable for that which will be a multi value map and now we are going to iterate over these headers and print out each key value pair for the incoming headers so this should work and every time a request comes in it should be able to print out everything in the logs so, so while we do that let's add few more headers so just like we added add request header to the incoming request we can also add some response header that is when the call goes out from the gateway back to the user we want to add a response header a additional header that we want the customer to see so in that case we are simply going to add another filter called add response header add response header again make sure there are no spaces 
and here we're going to define the key pair now all of these which we are doing are shortcut format right as you have seen so over here we are providing key value as comma separate value so key is x powered by and value is spring gateway demo service this is what a customer would see in their response header so let's restart this and let's see if this works fine so once the application restarts we are going to clear the logs and send a request from gateway to the service so we come in the postman we hit and now if you look at the logs over here we have the username that is coming in and we have calling from postman this is a header which has been added by the our gateway application before the call went to the service discovery server and here is our x powered by the response to which customer is seeing which comes from the add response header okay so let's see one more filter out there called multi map so what that is going to do is i don't think it's multi map it's called map request header so what this does is if we want to rename an incoming header to something else to the downstream service say your incoming header is called blue and your downstream service understands that header as x request blue you can do that so in our case let's say incoming header is username and our downstream sub services understand x username so you can do that transformation over here so we are going to define that my incoming header is going to be username this is something which is provided by the user but my downstream services doesn't understand this value they need a header defined as x hyphen user hyphen name so when the call comes in the gateway application before it hands off the request to the service discovery server discovery server and the discovery server passes on to the downstream services you should be able to see those values so if you see x username coding with danny and my incoming request was username so this is this is the value which was sent to the downstream server if you see here the forwarded post port is over there that is the value which is has been changed just before the call was sent out so there are many other configuration that you can do you have global filter default filters tls ssl you can also remove some of the header value which are coming from the back end uh, you can play around with the x forward filter there are tons of things that you can do so it's up to you how you want to do that you can do timeouts you can also do rate limiting but i'm not going to cover that today